Um, Minister, I, I have here, I have been sent a copy of a letter that you sent to Westmeath County Council on 15th February 2014. And basically what the letter does, it informs the council that a democratic decision which was made by the councillors is going to be overruled. The vote that they took was in relation to locations and setback distances for wind turbines development in the county development plan. And the councillors voted that industrial wind turbines should be strictly limited to cut over or cut away bogs. And the council also agreed on a setback distance of 10 times the height of the turbine from occupied dwellings. The council then received this letter from Minister O'Sullivan, basically telling them that the democratic decision that they took was not in line with national policy, namely the Planning and Development Act. Now, I remember when this government came to power first, it promised, ye promised, a democratic revolution. And perhaps I'm naive, but I believe that. I did believe it. But what has been delivered so far is, in my experience, an all-out attack on local government and local democracy. Uh, Minister, I, I don't need to remind you the, the wind turbine issue is currently a very controversial topic, and not least in the Midlands area, because what we're proposing is that industrial wind turbines will generate large volumes of energy to be exported to Britain. Now, Sinn Féin will soon launch a piece of legislation to include minimum setback distance for wind turbines development because we feel that that is very badly needed in legislation at the minute. Minister, I would ask you, would you please take heed of local concerns in relation to wind turbine projects? Because it's local people who can really identify whether an area is suitable for such de developments. It's not somebody sitting, Minister, in your office. They don't know the lie of the land in these areas. Local people know local areas best. Uh, this letter that you sent, Minister, it, it, to me it's very worrying because what it looks like is that government are trying to steamroll through these developments and they're not, you're not paying heed to local democracy or the concerns of local residents are the votes of those who represent those local rep uh, rep uh, residents. I don't think it's acceptable in a modern democracy and I think it's not just bad policy in terms of planning, I think it's bad policy full stop. So Minister, would you, would you change your mind on your decision to block the democratic voices of Westmeath County Council and I believe all parties uh, we, we were uh, represented in this vote. And will you respect the wishes of the people of Westmeath and indeed the people of Ireland because it's time for a total rethink of our national energy strategy. Thanks, Deputy um, Minister Sullivan. Well, uh, first of all, Deputy, um, your, your topical issue is a very general issue in relation to setback distances generally, and you specifically raised an issue in relation to Westmeath. Um, and I'm going to ask, answer in the general way, but I just want to say, first of all, that that is a draft directive. It's not a final directive. And there is an ongoing process with the local authority. So I'm not going to comment further on that specific issue at, at this point in time, but it's a draft directive. Um, I'd like to thank you, Deputy Calrivi, for raising this topical issue. And as you will recall from our previous debate, I commenced a public consultation on the 11th of December 2013 on proposed draft revisions to the existing 2006 Wind Energy Development Guidelines, focusing specifically on the issues of noise, setbacks and shadow flicker. 
The draft revisions propose the setting of a more stringent absolute noise limit day and night of 40 decibels for future wind energy developments. This limit is an outdoor limit. In general, the reduction of noise levels between the outside of a dwelling and the inside would be approximately 10 decibels. A mandatory setback distance of 500 metres between a wind turbine and the nearest dwelling for amenity considerations. That a condition be attached to all future planning permissions for wind farms to ensure that there will be no shadow flicker on, at any dwelling within 10 rotor diameters of a wind turbine. If shadow flicker does occur, the wind energy developer or operator will be required to take necessary measures such as turbine shutdown for the period necessary to eliminate the shadow flicker. It's important to emphasise that the mandatory setback of 500 metres is for amenity considerations, including visual amenity, and is not proposed as a noise control measure. In order to ensure an evidence-based approach to this issue, Marshall Day Acoustics, who have previously assisted the Australian and New Zealand governments in their reviews of wind energy, were commissioned to prepare a study on wind noise, which was a significant input into this review. Marshall Day recommended that an absolute noise limit be strongly considered as a noise control method rather than setbacks. On the issue of setbacks, Marshall Day said the following, the relationship between distance from a wind turbine or wind farm and noise effects is significantly variable and there is little means of future proofing when specifically minimum setback distances, when specifying, sorry, minimum setback distances. In this respect, setbacks therefore have the potential to either overprotect or underprotect wind farm neighbours and it's therefore recommended that setbacks setback are not used as a control method on their own. Therefore, on the basis of the technical advice received, the draft guidelines address the issue of noise control through a more stringent absolute noise limit day and night of 40 decibels for future wind energy developments, combined with a minimum setback distance requirement of 500 metres for amenity considerations, including visual amenity. The proposed noise limit takes into account both the World Health Organization findings in relation to nighttime noise and the review of international practices undertaken by Marshall Day Acoustics. Over 7,000 submissions have been received in my department on the draft revisions to the Wind Energy Development Guidelines during the public consultation phase, a substantial number of which were on the issue of setback distances, and I will certainly give these views careful consideration prior to finalising the revisions to the guidelines. Deputy Gravy, supplemental, two minutes. Uh, thank you, Minister. Uh, I, I think there are three elements to this here. The, the, the first element of it is the... Uh, the planning guidelines and, legislations, uh, and legislation in, in, in relation to the wind turbines. The second element is the wider planning and critical infrastructure policies, procedures and legislation. And the third element of it, to, to my mind, is government's view of what local government should mean and what local governance indeed should mean. And Minister, you say you know, that this was a, a draft directed and you're not going to comment on it. Well, I mean, that's like the HSE West North West Hospital Group saying that the, the, it's only a proposal to remove maternity services from Sligo Regional Hospital. A decision hasn't been made. Or it's like saying that the EPA are only considering hydraulic fracturing. A decision hasn't been made. They are both considering something that should not happen anyway, and it would be the expressed opinion of the people in, 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 the, in the affected areas that these things should not happen and shouldn't even be discussed. It's foolish to proceed uh, uh, and, uh, to process uh, wind farm planning applications when Minister Rabbit has indicated that he's shortly to publish a green paper on energy, and when we have been told that no financial arrangements have been discussed with the British government for our midland being used as a giant British offshore wind energy farm. And similarly, when elected members of Leitrim County Council voted by a large majority representing Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, Sinn Féin and Independents to have fracking banned in their county development plan, yet we have the EPA spending their time and taxpayers' money continuing to research into something that anybody who cares for the next generation would know should not be allowed under any circumstances or and under any regulatory regime. This isn't reform of local government minister and this is not democracy. Whatever it is, it is not democracy. Thank you Deputy Minister, just two minutes. Well, um, 
first of all, um, the guidelines that are currently in existence um, are in existence, Deputy. So um, the draft guidelines that I've proposed are actually, from your perspective, an improvement on what's there at the moment. For example, currently there is a 500 metre setback, but it's not mandatory. I'm proposing that it would be mandatory. And secondly, there's an improvement with regard to noise and there's an eradication of shadow flickers. So, you know, the, the, these are improving the situation as it stands now, and that's in the draft. But I can't say at this point in time what's going to be in the final um, guidelines. As I said, I've got 7,000 submissions. The closing date for submissions was last Friday, and I expect that we'll be able to publish uh, probably by the end of June the final version of the guidelines. So, you know, it's not true to say that if I wasn't doing this, that, you know, things would somehow be better. In fact, what we're proposing proposing is an improvement from the perspective of local people. And I mean, the other point about democracy, I mean, can I remind you, Deputy, that, that we had a Mahan Tribunal, that, you know, there were planning decisions made in some local authorities in this country um, that called for a, a, a tribunal of inquiry and that event resulted in a recommendation that we should have a plan planning regulator. So, I mean, there has to be you know, there has to be national policy side by side with local democracy and there has to be some relationship uh, and some, um, if you like, national guidelines that will guide decisions that are made locally. And I don't think anybody would want that there wouldn't be any kind of national guidelines. I mean, I issued a directive, for example, to a local authority that wanted to build on a floodplain, wanted to change planning. Uh, their local development plan or their county development plan that would have allowed building on a floodplain. Now, I think I was right to do that. Um, so, you know, I mean, there has to be some balance uh, between national policy and good planning and local democracy. And, you know, I'm quite happy to stand over that balance. There has to be a balance in this case in relation to the guidelines between national policy in relation to reducing our dependence on fossil fuels and using, you know, the, the, the natural energy that we have and the needs of local communities. And that's what I intend to ensure is achieved when we publish the final guidelines in relation to wind.